What's up everybody, Skyhook Garage here. Got another Volkswagen Jetta for you. It's got the 2.5 liter inline five cylinder and today we got a P0442 EVAP emissions control small leak. Now on these cars they have a uh, leak detection pump in the back. While the vehicle is off it's going to seal the system then it's going to draw a vacuum on it with the pump in the back. You'll hear it run sometimes when you shut the car off and it will perform the leak diagnostics during that time. Now, obviously your EVAP leaks could be gas cap, most likely not the cause, unless you can actually see some cracks in that seal on the gas cap. More likely than not on this engine and this platform right here, you're gonna have a, an issue with the EVAP purge valve. That's this guy right here. I've kind of taken it halfway apart, doing some testing on it. Now, what happens is this line is traditionally hooked up here. This line here goes over to the throttle body and you have a uh, vacuum on that. And vacuum is applied to the solenoid at all times. And then when the ECU determines it, it's gonna cycle this guy on and off, pulse width modulated, and it's gonna pull in some of those fumes that have accumulated in the EVAP system. And it's gonna draw it into the engine to be burned. Now, your leaks could be from the lines in the system, the gas cap, as I said before, but on this platform, this valve can actually not be sealing properly and cause a leak. Traditionally, when this valve goes bad, you'll have a code for EVAP purge during non-purge event. But with this vehicle here, uh, sometimes you don't have that monitoring. Now, one way to test this valve is to apply power and ground to the inside of this solenoid here to make sure that it's working. Always make sure it's disconnected. You don't want to backfeed power on those uh, those wires right there into the ECU. So if you can, you get some alligator clips down in there. You can test it that way. Um, power it up, you hear it click, you should hear it click, and then you should have pass through through the valve here. Now, traditionally with it unplugged or the vehicle off, this valve should be sealed, meaning you shouldn't be able to draw through it at all. One way to check is to see if you can. Now, if you can draw through it or put apply vacuum to this end or the other end here, and uh, if, if vacuum does not hold with it disconnected, then this valve is immediately bad. So that's the problem with this valve here. Now, before we get into it real quick, if you have good vacuum on either side and you've ohmed your wires out here, your terminals in here, and you have decent resistance, you, want, you don't want uh, infinite resistance and you also don't want zero. You want somewhere as a solenoid, it varies from solenoid to solenoid. But if you have a little bit of resistance there, then you would go on to hooking power and ground up to it and see if you hear it click. Now, if you have no resistance or zero resistance, still try the uh, jumper wire in here to see if it clicks and actuates. If it doesn't click or do anything like that, then this valve is clearly bad and it's non-functioning and it needs to be replaced. Now, the problem I have is this is not holding vacuum. So with it disconnected, I can pull vacuum through this solenoid when I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't be able to, okay? So this one needs to be replaced. All we're looking at here is a clamp on this end, and then on this side is going to be one of these fancy, what I call the German clips. Uh, they go around kind of like a CV axle. You're gonna put one, it'll be wrapped around there, it'll grab the little tabs up here, and then you're gonna squeeze that in to tighten it down onto the hose. Now, if you you can just put a regular hose clamp on that, don't go crazy. Um, hose, you, hose clamps have a tendency to tear into rubber if you clamp too hard. It's just va uh, manifold vacuum, so uh, just make sure that you don't go nuts tightening it. You can Amazon a kit, all right? You can get a variety kit here. It comes with a bunch of different fittings. If you're working on these German cars, it's a good idea to have this kit here. And then of course the tool. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the hoses back on and I'll show you the install of that clamp real quick. Okay, so new-ish valve. I have a uh, used motor for this vehicle that I preemptively grabbed at the junkyard about a year ago. This engine's got 385,000 miles on it, still running strong, but anyway, so I pulled this valve off of the complete engine that I pulled out of the junkyard. So this is used, but it's, uh, it still works. It holds vacuum and it actuates properly. Now, uh, once the valve is back installed, um, you're going to want to 
get your hoses back on. You want to put this type of clamp if you chose to go this way. Make sure it goes on the hose first and then slip the hose onto the port of the EVAP purge solenoid here. Now, a trick real quick to get these hoses off. If you can't, I like to take a pair of needle nose pliers, okay, and you're going to basically grab the end of the hose and gently grip it like this and you're just going to pinch and try to twist it back and forth until it breaks loose. You don't want to pry out on it. You got you kind of want to get this hose spinning a little bit on this port before you start trying to pull it off of the port. It'll assist you a bit. So get your hose installed back on. If you're using this type of clamp, obviously you're going to want to line the square up that hasn't been crushed yet. And then you're going to grab your tool. And this tool here has a couple different spots on it. You can either grab it from the top like this. You can see the teeth up top, and then it also has a version. Maybe this isn't the type that has it. Some of these tools have uh, two sides to it. One for getting at it just like this, going at it just like that. And then some of them also have a nice feature that has a, a side grab if you need to kind of grab it at a funky angle. This one's vertical, uh, straight on, should be pretty easy. So we'll get it on that square, just like that. You're going to want to make sure that the whole tool is over the square and just give it a press. Don't go crazy. Like I said, just like a regular hose clamp, you don't want to go too nuts. You just want to crush that. Yeah, it could have got a little bit straighter, but that'll hold. That'll work nice and tight, not moving around. Make sure you get your clamp onto the other side. Make sure that the connector is plugged in. You're gonna clear the codes and do a couple test drives with it. EVAP codes generally take a little bit of time to come back on. EVAP systems don't normally test themselves if you're below a quarter tank and above three quarters of a tank. Every vehicle is a little bit different, but again, drive cycle it a little bit and see if that light comes back on. But beyond that, you guys should be good to go. Hope this video was helpful. Until next time, thanks.